morning. Today I'm going to do a review of my HST train pack R3903. There's one powered car 43021 and an unpowered car 43132. My coaches are Hornby R4937 Alpha. R4891 Alpha and R4890 Charlie. These are in service today for Scott Rail. And 43021 was delivered on the 9th of July 1976 and 43132 on the 21st of July 1979. Operational life was extended when NTU power units were fitted. 43021 was fitted in 2006 and, and again 2006 for 43132. Now, fantastic locos, the detail on them, superb, the carriages are superb. The only problem is there's a coupling issue when you do not use a driving car to pull but use it to push. And in the next couple of chapters, I'll show you how to fix this. Then I'll show you the loco run. Thank you for watching. Okay, before I do the run, I'm going to show you a difference with couplings because there is a coupling issue with the Scott Rail R3685 set. And I'll show you what it is. Well, there is not with the uh, meningitis R3903. Now, what you'll see is, on the Scott Rail, they've got an NEM coupling and a free hook, i.e. it's not connected to the wheels, see? And on the Loco, they've got a Hornby Intermediate R8267. The wheels are free. On Meningitis, you will see they have the intermediate coupling on both the car and the coach but the wheels turn with the coupling whereas on the Scott Rail coach they do not. The same as with the Scott Rail Meningitis R3903 has a Hornby intermediate coupling. Now the problem is with Meningitis R3903 the train runs in both directions without any issues. With the Scott Rail, it doesn't. And I will show you exactly why and exactly how to fix it. You haven't got to send it back, it's a simple fix, and I will show you. Now, as best as I can show you, the two intermediate couplings on meningitis R8267 you can see they're level so when the train is being pushed providing your tracks level the loco will not derail now I'm going to show you what the Scott Rail coupling looks like you can see again look that's perfect now here we are with the Scott Rail and look at these couplings, they overlap see, so what's happening is when it pushes, gets to a bend, it derails. I mean that's a hell of an issue. What I will say is, it's absolutely fine when you've got the power car pulling. I will say that, it's absolutely fine, but you can see, it's awful. Anyway, what I will do now is I'll show you how you fix this. And here is how you fix it. A Backman 36060 coach pipe coupling. A simple fix that's easy to do. And you can see, and I will show you it running around the track and you in both directions and you will see it is a really simple fix not expensive Hornby do provide some alternate couplings in the pack 
which are not very good in my view, overly complicated and they don't really work. But these pipe couplings, they do the job and you will see this locomotive running fine. Thank you. Okay, this is a loco going round with the driving car pushing. And the first section of this video, all it is going to be is the driving car pushing. I believe I'm running it at what I would call a reasonable speed. For an HST. Now what I have done is I've used left standard NEM couplings in between the carriages. No need to change them, the carriages are the same level, there's no issues. One of my favourite shots. Now my points crossover is a streamlined so they shouldn't be a challenge anyway. But you can see it's a lovely, lovely loco. Now here's my version of the Licky Incline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this running. So you can see there's no trickery here. And as I say, this is a driving car pushing. Going around the worst part of my track, the radius 2 into the radius 2. If it's going to do that, it's going to do anything. Here we are going in the other direction. With the driving car pulling. In fact, it actually sounds a little bit different, to be honest. And you can see here, I've left it running. And there we go, on the other part of my track. What I'm going to do here, is I'm going to show you this HST 125 or 43, whatever you want to call it running in both directions, uncut, that is a radius 2, that is a radius 2 curve point, it is the worst part of my track. When the loco is going round away from the camera, it is a driving car pushing, when it comes towards you, it is a driving car pulling. Here we go. So this is a driving car pushing. And as I've said, this is the worst part of my track, no excuses for it. I'm running it slowly, so nothing is going to bounce off anything. And here is the driving car pulling. It does have cab lights, I've got to put some men in it yet. But I wanted to make sure the thing ran okay before I did that. And here we are with the driving car pushing. And you can see, no sign of derailments. Really, really smooth. Now when I used the standard couplings it came with, it was just... Damn. And that's the driving car. And we're going to take it on the other part of the track. So you can see it going around there. Might as well, even though it's a wide sweeping bend, it'd be quite easy. I might as well give you the full set. And you can see that runs absolutely fine. And it really, really is a simple fix. The 
slow speed running. I did think about buying some more coaches, but on these, I just think three is enough. I know I've got a model railway large enough to take more. This is with the driving car pushing. I'm going to take them apart and put a driver in each side. And you can see the running is... It's, fanta it's a fantastic loco. I'm really pleased with it. Okay, this is a driving car pushing. Okay, this footage is going to be totally uncut. And you see here you've got the driving car pushing. We're going to give it some welly. There's a driving car pushing, here we go. And you can see that's fairly easily done. I'm going to slow it down gently. And we're going to show you the driving car pulling. First at a sensible speed. You can actually see when the driving car is pushing because the carriage is kind of hunt. So you might not catch it on film. But it's a slow speed with the driving car pulling. And here we are, with a driving car, flying through. What we're going to do, we're going to put it on the uh, wall loop. It should be cool. Now what I've done is I've made a couple of alterations here with this train. As you know I put Batman coach bike couplings 36060 between the front carriages and the first two coaches. What I've also done and is, is I've put all the intermediate couplings R8267s between the carriages in the middle. What I've also done is the vertical parts that drop down where they're bouncing around on the track they're catching my points they're catching the frogs 
So I've cut those off. And you can see it runs absolutely fine. And this is going through set track points. I'll stop it here and it should run in the other direction without a problem. Here we go, that's with the loco being pushed by the driving car. And you can see I can run this with 100% confidence. Speed it up a little bit. And you can see they kind of hunt a little bit when the driving car's pushing. Now I'm showing this piece of track. And you can see there that was too fast. The coach lurched. Now the way I could possibly stop that is quite simply by using the Backman S coach pipe couplings 36060. That wasn't on the track right. In between. Dear. Helps if you put them on the track correctly, doesn't it? But I'm being honest with this, there's no point in making out something's not what it is. See? Okay, let's have another go. So we'll go around make sure they're on the track correctly. Because that does kind of help, doesn't it? So this is going round with the driving car pulling. I do have a feeling that with set track points, where the carriages are stuck being turned so much, to make them run smoothly with the driving car pushing, you're going to need to use 36060s. I'm sure of that, because I've just had another derailment. But let me just check and see what's going on here. And the thing is, you don't panic, just have a look. Now what's happened here is, the points have crossed. Where you've got the hooks, what they've done is they've crossed. So what's happening is where they've crossed, you're not getting the full movement. Also on one of the one of them, I can see it's not dropping down. It's tight. So where they're moving along and going up and down, they should be dropping loosely, but they're not. But that's an easy fix as well. I suggest that's the problem. It's not because they're overlapping because they're butting up. So basically what's happening there is where you've got the couplers, the hooks bending down, they're lifting and they're not dropping on the bend. They're staying in this up position. Now the way to fix that is you can take it out and file it or you can put some oil on it. But they're simple fixes. But what I might do is I might just put some 36060s, no sorry, yeah 36060 back and couplings in there. Well actually it's fine now. That's the kind of speed I would normally run it at, maybe a little bit slower. run it round a little bit. If it does it again, I'll have a look at them. But you can see that's now absolutely fine. Do some welling.
Yeah, that's fine. What it was, was the coupling, for some reason, had got stuck in the up position on the carriage. And here's the other way. Anyway, to recap, between the carriage, between the front driving cars, I've got Backman coach pipe couplings 36-060s. I did start with standard NEM couplings between coaches 2 and 3 and the middle coach, but I was finding I was getting derailments. So I swapped them for Hornby Intermediate R8267s. And they're fine. By what you've just seen, they're fine. The only thing is, where they're a bit tight, where you've got the vibration and the oscillation and you've lifted up, they haven't dropped down again. But I can sort that out. I know you've just seen me run it around several times and there hasn't been a derailment. But as I say, it's a fantastic model that you can get running really, really well for little money. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.